One of my most popular videos is The Number E is Everywhere, where I show that the number E comes up in a lot of mathematics and a lot of real life. So I've had a lot of questions about but why, but how, and so I thought I'd do this video where I explain some of the mathematics behind what I did in the first video. So good idea to have a look at my first video, The Number E is Everywhere, before you have a look through this video. So I start out with the first one is involves rolling dice and we say that the chance of not rolling a one where you roll the number of times equal to the number of sides on the dice um, starts to approach one on E. So how does that work? Well if we look up here we've got one minus one on E and that represents the chance of not getting a one when you if you like you select an, a random number between one and N. Chance of not getting a one is 1 minus 1 on n. If we roll the dice or we select the numbers n times then we have to multiply the probability n times by itself so we've got this little n up here and we want the limit as n goes off to infinity as that, that n gets larger and larger. So I'm going to call that s. So one of the useful things when you have powers like this power of n is to take the log of both sides. In this case it's okay for me to swap the log and the limit. In other words, I can take the, the log inside the limit. Once I do that, I can then use the exponent rule to get the n, the power n, then comes down in front of the log. Now I've got, uh, I'm going off, as n goes off to infinity, this n will get larger and larger, will go off to infinity, but this 1 minus 1 on n, or log, sorry, of 1 and 1 minus n will go closer and closer to 0. So I've got, I'm multiplying essentially, if you like, infinity by 0. So what we can do is divide, instead of multiplying this up here by n, we'll divide by 1 on n. That doesn't change anything. But now we've got the top and the bottom both going off to 0. And in this case, we can use L'Hopital's rule, which says that we can take the derivative of the top and the bottom. Be careful, examiners love to ask questions about where L'Hopital's rule doesn't apply, but in this case it does apply. When I take the derivative with respect to n of the numerator, and the denominator, I get this expression here, which is equal to negative 1. And so what we've said is then that log of s equals negative 1, which means that s equals 1 on e, which is what we wanted to show. OK, on to the next one, where I say that e is this unique number, such that the area under the curve from 1 to e of 1 on t is uh, equal to 1 exactly. And so what we're saying is the integral from 1 to e of 1 on t dt equals 1. And this is, for many people, the definition of e. So in my case it's the definition of e, so we'll move on. This problem here where you're investing money, it's a similar sort of idea to what we saw before with the, the dice. Uh, so let's see how we can explain this. This bit here, we start with 1 plus 0.05 on n. That represents the amount we would have if we invested a dollar at 5% convertible n times a year. And this is the amount we would have after just one of those n periods of year. So we're interested in the amount after seven years. So we raise it to the power of n, which takes it up to a year. And then we raise it to the power of seven, which takes it to seven years. And we didn't start off with 1, we start off with 10,000, and we take the limit as n goes to infinity. And so this amount is what we have at the end. And if we apply the same sort of uh, style of argument as we did for the dice, then um, we'll get uh, the formula that I had in the video that involves E. Okay, this one where we say uh, if we have y equals x to the power of 1 on x, then the maximum value occurs when we get to E. So I'm going to use similar to sort of technique as before. We've got a power here, so let's take log. So we get to this line. Now let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Now we've got this problem here. We've got d log y dx. And the way to solve that is what we call implicit differentiation. So we say that that is equal to d log y dy times dy dx. And so that d log y dy is 1 on y. The dy dx is actually what we're trying to find here. Um, and so when we sort it all out, we get this expression down the bottom for dy dx. And we can see from this that the only time this equals 0 is when log x is equal to 1, i.e. when x equals e. 
So what we've shown is that there is either a minima, a maximum, or a point of inflection at x equals e, and then it's not that difficult to show that in fact it's a maximum. Uh, this one is the next involving populations, and I think in the, oh no, I know actually in the original video I, what I said was wrong, and I tried to correct it with some annotations. But here we've got a population that starts off at 10 million, and the population growth at any time is equal to 2% of the population at that time. And we got that formula involving E. So how do we do that? You can use an argument like we use for the money or for the dice. But another way to look at it is this. We can let PT be the population at time T. And from what we're told about the change in the population, that tells us that DPDT, the rate of change of the population with respect to time, is equal to 2% of the population. Now there are ways to solve this, which you typically learn about first year university. This is a differential equation. I'll just show you here that if we make PT equals C, where C is a constant times E to the 0.02T, then in fact you can see from what I've got on this page that in fact that does work. That if PT is equal to C E to the power of 0.02T, then that does satisfy the differential equation we have up here. So once you get to second year university or so, you can then prove to yourself that in fact that's the only solution. So once we get that formula down the bottom uh, for, um, well once we show that PT equals that term with the C, the constant, we just got to solve for the constant, which we can do because we know the initial population is 10 million. Then we come on to this one which caused a fair bit of interest. Uh, e is this unique number such that if you raise e to the power of any number other than e itself, it will be greater than that number raised to the power of e. So I had this slide in my initial video. So the way we can uh, look at that is that we want to show up here that e to the c is greater than c to the e for c not equal to e. That's it. it's for all c not equal to e. So the way to do that is actually start off with this expression, let y equal log, e, log x on x. Use similar sort of ideas uh, that we've used before, where we take the derivative of both sides um, and we equate it to zero and we see that the derivative of this function y is, uh, is equal to zero when x equals e. Then with a little more work we can show that's a maximum. So what this means is that log e on e is greater than log c on c for all c not equal to e and then we can just use various power and log rules to simplify all that which means down the bottom we have that e to the c is greater than c to the e for all c not equal to e. This one uh, where we pour oil into a bin which has water uh, several people pointed out that oil and water don't mix so you might prefer to think of this as cordial or whatever but once again as we did uh, previously, we can construct a differential equation based on what we're told here. So if we let a t equal the amount of cordial in the bin at time t, then we know that the change, the rate of change of a, in other words, d a t d t, is equal to two, because two uh, liters of cordial is going in per minute, and minus. Uh, AT on 50 because we know that 1 50th of the mixture is flowing out at the bottom. And once we have that, in a similar way to what we saw before with the differential equation, it's just a question of solving that differential equation, which will throw up the number E in the solution. On to this question, where we basically are showing that the derivative of E to the X is equal to E to the X. So this is a very interesting one. The derivative of E to the X is itself equal to the number, the, the, the formula itself, e to the x. So here I've um, got one way of looking at that. Um, at university we tend to not start with powers and then say logs are the opposite. We tend to start with log and then regard powers as the opposite. There's some advantages to that. So we start off with, by definition, this thing for log x. Uh, then by the fundamental theorem of calculus we can see that if we take the log of both sides we get 1 on x. So now I let y equal e to the x. I do the same trick that I've used before. I take log of both sides, a bit of implicit differentiation, and then it fi we finally end up at the end with saying that 
dy dx is equal to e to the x, which is actually equal to y itself. So the derivative of e to the x is equal, to, with respect to x, is equal to e to the x. Okay, this is where we use the famous formula for e, i and pi to generate a formula for e. Um, this is um, not quite the whole story. Um, firstly, e to the i pi represents a rotation in the complex plane of the number 1 round to the number negative 1. So it's a rotation of 180 degrees or pi radians. But it's also, you can also get from 1 to negative 1 by rotating 3 times or 5 times or 7 times, or in fact negative 3 times or negative 5 times. In fact, any odd number. So if you wanted, you could actually say up here e to the i times pi times 2k plus 1 plus 1 equals 0 for any integer k. And that enables you to have a slightly uh, more fulsome definition of what e is um, than what I had in the original video. You might, if you're unsure about this stuff about e to the i pi representing a, rep uh, a rotation, you might want to have a look at my videos um, understanding the complex number i and more understanding the complex number i. In fact, the second one's probably more relevant. So that'll help you fill you in there. And finally, we had the question of the derangements and how that approaches e. Um, so I'm going to look at it not with letters like I had in my video, but numbers. So suppose we have um, n people to arrange in a line. Well, the number of permutations, in other words, the number of ways of doing that is you can see the n times n minus 1 times all the way down to 2 times times 1, which is n factorial. If you're unsure of that, you might want to have a look at my video, Permutations Made Easy, where I go into that, which will also help you with when we talk about the number of derangements. So a derangement is when this person that we've designated as person number 1, when we do all these arrangements, person 1 is not in the first position, person 2 is not in the second, all the way up to person n is not in the nth position. And the way to look at that is, briefly, is that we start off here with the n factorial, that's the total number of arrangements. Now we have to take off um, the number of people, uh, the number of uh, arrangements where we have one person in the um, in their correct position, we have to get rid of that. But when doing that, we've actually we've actually double counted with the situation where we have two people in their sort of correct position. So we have to adjust for that. But now we have to add back for the situation where we've got three in the right position, and this just continues through. So we get this formula with negatives and positives. So the total number of derangements divided by the total number of permutations, I've written arrangements there but I meant permutations, well it equals this ratio here or this uh, expression here and that turns out to be 1 minus 1 on 1 factorial plus 1 on 2 factorial all the way up and that approaches uh, the number 1 on e or e to the negative 1 which is equal to this one which goes off to infinity and so, so this expression approaches this expression as n goes off to infinity and this expression is 1 on e. And if you want to know more about that you can have a look at my video Taylor series made easy where I explain um, the rationale for coming to that conclusion about that, that 1 on e is equal to this expression here. That's all I wanted to say about uh, my video the number e in this video the making of e. I hope you've found it useful.